Welcome back to our third hour of our lecture. And I know it has not been easy, especially when it's two hours is easy, but when it's three hours, uh, sometimes we get tired and bored, but thank God the, the lecture is just only 25 minutes. And having said that, we have been talking about certain ability when it comes to uh, the issue of being part of entering seminary. People go to seminary to acquire knowledge and others people go to seminary for just a show where they don't have anything to do. And then we have talked about uh, the scientific spirit that seems to be in incompatible with the old spirit of a simple faith. I tried to explain to you that uh, faith should be over overruled, um, should be able to overcome the reality of the culture. But science has have tried to uh, limit the stage of Christianity in order to upgrade the science aspect of life and otherwise uh, try to create a problem between knowledge and piety, also other, uh, between culture and Christianity. But the idea is that the problem might be settled in one of the three ways that I want to give you today. Uh, there are three categories ways that we can um, uh, uh, overcome this. So our third video is going to talk about three uh, ways in which we can we can settle the problems of the relationship between uh, culture and Christianity. Remember, we have not dealt precisely on what is culture yet. We're trying to overview what is happening concerning uh, the culture and that. Let's go to the next first one. This says, in the first place, now when you talk about in the first place, we Christianity may be subordinated to culture. The reality of it is that overwhelming, I already said it multiple times, that the culture tries to overshadow because the scientists have tried to create certain things to, to give us that which um, they think they are above the Christianity. The solution uh, really thought to some extent unconsciously is being favored by a very large and influential portion of the church today. Um, for element for the eliminations of the supernatural in Christianity so tremendously common is common today really makes Christianity merely natural uh, I, I said at initially today that Christianity is a, it's a kind of daily and natural way of expressing the reality of brotherlyhood being Christ little Christ or bring uh, followers of Christ our relationship is supposed to be naturally within us you move as the spirit is in you and continue to penetrate in you continue to over uh, emphasize things for you now Christianity becomes a human uh, product a mere part of human culture. When we take a book of um, our book, our main book, major book that we're reading, it talks about the kind of Christianity as a human culture. Uh, in page um, 45, the cultural metrics. You can look at that in this book. Okay, the cultural metrics. Uh, this is where it talks about. Yes, so history, human being in a culture. Now, thoughtful 
People have long discussed and debated the non-biological components of human nest. Okay? Such debates within Western culture have often centered around whether a human being is properly regarded as consisting of two parts, body and soul, or of three, three parts, body, soul and spirits. Theologians, in addition, have given attention to the relationship between non-corporeal parts of human being and the image of God in which we were created according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, 27, 28 it's the, that a human consists of more than merely a physical body and that is that it is this monist that distinguish the human from animals have seldom been disputed. Now in between the animals and man, you can see the sense in man and the sense in animals are different. So if you want to go by scientists, when they say man is, uh, the, the, the creation of man was by evolution and man emancipated from, from the, 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 the apes. It means we reason like animals. <clears throat> These days people talk when, when you do something wrong, people abuse you and connect you with animals. It means your sense is lower than the sense of man. Because God's sense is above the sense of uh, animal. So that is what we are talking about. The, um, the, the human culture of a person. Many had tend to define this monist more nest in terms of human ability to reason. Some have pointed more to artistic and musical creation as the supreme the domina, demonstration of human superiority over animals and the infrequence of our closeness to God. A person knowledgeable about such things as art, music, and uh, philosophy came to be called cultured. Okay? Cultured. They, they use of the term culture in these ways was borrowed from French. Many English speakers still think of the term culture as referring primarily to artistic or philosophical practice or even to good manners and other occurrent, uh, um, accoutrement of the upper social class. So I have given you a clue, but this aspect we will continue in another section of our class when we, we continue in our online class of the human um, nature or human culture. So this shows us the, the, the event in which uh, the, the, the existence of man has a difference comparing to the existence of animals and comparing to the culture we, which we were talking about. But culture is made by man, and so we should know the difference between that. But as such, it is something entirely different from the old Christians or Christianity that was based upon a direct um, revelation from God deprived those of its note of authority the gospel is no gospel any longer it is a check for untold millions but without the significance at the bottom okay without the significance at the bottom so it is no more a, 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 a it's no longer Christianity is no longer a gospel, but a check. When you say a check, means to, to find out yourself if you are um, connected to certain group or you are not connected to certain group. When you see someone in a Christian saying, I'm a Christian, they try to identify themselves with those who are claiming to be in relationship with God. 
But some of them, like I said, brotherly love and feelings and relationship sometimes never exist between them. So one aspect of it is that Christianity may be uh, subordinate to culture. So this is one reason we are talking about. And so on, in, so in subordinating Christianity to culture, we have really destroyed Christianity. And what continues to bear the old name is counterfeit. Okay? It's counterfeit because why? We don't have the reality. It's not been uh, assured by the way we see things. So the first part we're saying the subordinating Christianity to the culture have been really destroyed has destroyed the Christianity in it. What continues is just a barely name. Most people are Christian by name, not by action, not by character, not by the calling of the Christianity that it talks about. So when you look at the culture and the Christianity, it has the same meaning and it, it, it's, it's, it's been practiced as if it's a normal way. People see it in a normal way and relate that it's not just Christian, just a name and that's why when temptation come some people easily get over it and renounce their Christianity and find themselves extremely somewhere so that is number one situation when we talk about the way so to be able to solve this problem like I said there are three ways one way we talk about the subordinating Christianity looking down on Christians uh, Christianity as if it is a mere name it's been been just a formality that people follow it's not reality on it the second part of it or solution goes to the opposite extreme in its effort to give religion a clear feel it seek to destroy culture again hmm. which one are we the solution is better than a dissolution of number two is better than the first one instead of indulging in the shallow optimisms of what? Or uh, deification of humanity. It recognized that uh, the, 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 the profound evil of the world and does not shrink from the most heroic remedy. Okay? The not showing the whole hero remedy. It means like um, instead of uh, uh, being in a namesake, just having the namesake of Christianity, uh, this aspect is, is is trying to embrace culture in a higher perspective than the Christianity. Okay, so the world is so evil that it cannot possibly produces the means for it own salvation. Salvation must be the gift of an entirely new life coming directly from God. Directly from God. You can possess the salvation only if you believe, only if you accept, only if you associate yourself and practically carry the ministry, the gospel of God into a different perspective to those who could be able to come along with you in this condition. May I say that coming directly from God imposes the reality of connection with God. Coming directly from God, it shows that without Him, nothing on earth would have been possible. Okay? Because of him, the world was created. In him, the world was created. With him, the world was created. In him, we exist. And in him, our solution, our life, our potential is being found in him. There is nothing compared to whatever we think about it. Now, in its extreme form, this solution hardly requires refutation. If Christianity is really found, to contradict that reason which in is our only means of apprehending truth, then, of course, we must either modify or abandon Christianity. So one way or the other, we cannot change the true nature of Christianity. 
we cannot change the true nature of Christianity by uh, by uh, by adapting or mixing the reality of culture in Christianity. Most people take culture and mix it with Christianity and changing the pattern of Christianity and saying that Christianity must go in this way. No, no, no. We must understand this. That's not Christianity. So modifying or abandoning Christianity is one way. We must either modify or abandon. Means It means, of course, the reality is not there again. No more reality in the Christian faith. No more reality in the Christian faith. We cannot therefore be entirely in depth, independent of the achievement of the intellect. So that's why I, 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 I erase the motion that when you exercise your intellect, when you are preaching, it becomes part of you as if you are a true Christian. No. I said our Christianity is not determined by what we preach. Our Christianity is determined by what we do actually what it's in in a practical way we can preach heaven and earth but our christianity is not seen in that that are mistakes that people normally found and and feel that they are in christ in, in christ so forgive me if i say this that christianity has its basic even before the culture was established christianity came as a result of relationship that we have to make the relationship between the culture and the Christianity to be in, in, in inclined to the purpose of that which the gospel of God was made. Furthermore, we cannot <coughs> without consistency employ, um, employ the, the, the printing press, the railroad, the telegram in the propagation of our gospel and at the same time denounce as evil the, those acts, uh, those activities of the human mind that produces these things. Intellectually, yes, our minds have been measured by what exactly comes in our mind okay the fact is real we cannot denounce it what the evilness of it it's not what we are meant into okay and in the productions of these things not merely practical investive genius had a part but also back of that the investigations of pure science are eliminated simply by the desire to know what do you know? What do you come to see? What do you really hope for? Is the issue that the Christianity is being built upon which culture can be able to stand. Okay? The coming of Christ should not abolish everything, but it should transform. And that's why some people say Christianity through culture. God in the culture. Not God and culture. Well, God and culture is okay. But God in the culture could be another aspect of showing the reality of Christianity. Where are we heading to when it comes to the reality of Christianity? Are we, are we functioning because we know that Christianity is up to that? Okay? It is in its extreme form, therefore, involving the abandonment of all intellectual activities this second solution will be adopted by none of us the professors none of the uh, 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 um, theologians because it is also uh, an investigation of the pure science let me just put it this way it, like i says but also back of that the investigation of a poor scientific and eliminated simply by the desire to be known. This, um, but very many pious men in the church today are adapting the solution to, in essence and in the spirit. Okay? Everyone has the right to adapt whatever is right 
But we need to understand clearly that Christianity is overcome, uh, it's, it's above culture. Don't allow culture to overcome uh, Christianity. Okay? Oh, so they admit the, 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 the philosophers or the professors or the, the, the theologians admit that the Christianity must have a part in human culture. Agree? Yes, I agree to that. Christianity must have a part in human culture. It means bringing Christianity into the human culture is another principal way of solving the problem we have. If we can consciously, not like the, the, the scientific people look at it, we can partially change the concept that Christianity, uh, culture should overcome Christianity. Such men or really theologians can never engage in the art of science without or with anything like enthusiasm. Such enthusiasm they will regard as disloyalty to the gospel. Such a position is really both uh, logical and unbiblical when it comes to the reality of Christianity in culture. God has given us certain power of mind and has implanted within us the inner, uh, inner, inner, eradicable conviction, in eradicable conviction that these powers were intended to be exercised. You cannot erase, you cannot delete, you cannot change. But the reality is that we are being implanted in us these things in order to help us in carrying the gospel trip. The Bible too contains poetry that exhibits no lack of enthusiasm, no lack of a keen um, appreciation of beauty with these with the beauty. So even within the Bible we have, we can see <coughs> the continuity that appreciate and also push us to the, the, the manner in which we struggle to be able to differentiate between the culture and Christianity. With this second solution of our problem, we we cannot we cannot rest content okay so despite all we can do the desire to know and to love and and to love of beauty cannot be entirely steep led and we cannot um, permanently regard these desires as evil so it's it's obvious. It's obvious that it is real. It's not evil, but it is also another principal way of solving problems in our relationship between Christianity and culture. The question is: Are then Christianity and culture in a conflict that is to be settled? only by the destruction of one or the order of the con uh, contending forces at this now these are questions i can allow you to pound a run and if you have any answer to that you can send to me uh, through my email or whatever you can send to me but when we come to face to face or offline class, we might take these questions that are popping up to be able to discuss them uh, gradually in our discussion. Now the third one which could be our last section of our class today uh, is, um, is instead of destroying the arts and science or being indifferent to them. 
let us cultivate them with all the enthusiasm of the varieties of, of various humanities but at the same time consecrate them to the service of our God okay to the service of our God whatever we do must be to the service of our God we should not allow it to be taken out of that instead of Steve Lee the pleasure afforded by the acquisitions of knowledge or by the appreciation of what is beauty the issue there is that let us accept this pleasure as the gift of a heavenly father to acknowledge whatever he has provided for us instead of obliterating and distinctions between the kingdom and the world which is the Christianity and the culture or on the other hand we draw in from the world into a sort of modernized intellectual um, monasticism okay let us go forth joyfully enthusiastically to make the world subject to God certain certain obvious advantages ad advantages are, uh, are connected with such a solution of a problem friends in the first place logically logical advantage a man can believe only what he holds to be true we are Christian because we hold Christianity to be true but other men hold Christianity to be false who is right we can stop here and continue from there next week thank you for being part of this class I appreciate your your, your participation in this class and I hope in next week we'll continue to be uh, we'll continue from here and we can see what it takes that we will be able to uh, understand the, 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 the subject the more. God bless you and God be with you till we meet.